Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about effect size. Okay, so effect size is different from p values in an important way. Okay, so effect size looks at the size of a difference between two groups, where a p value only looks at whether or not a difference exists. And like I said in a previous video about p values, Oftentimes, if you have a very large sample size, like, for example, 5,000 in each group, you're almost certainly going to get a p-value less than 0.05. And, and that's great, because you got a significant result, you can talk about that. But what if the difference is 0.001? It, the actual mean difference is that small, and you got a significant result, but you don't really care. Because it doesn't really mean anything. Like, uh, let's say that was different than IQ between two groups of people. We, d we don't care about a, a difference in IQ of point zero zero one because it's not a meaningful thing to us. So, how can we really look at a method of effect? Like, the, get an idea of how meaningful an effect is. And that's what effect I attempt to do. The criticisms of effect I think that it is a different concept than uh, practical significance, but it is nice in the sense that we can use it to compare effects. We can we can look at a measure of effect size and get and use that to compare it to other experiments, other similar experiments, and get an idea of what causes a greater effect. Okay, so when we talk about effect size, we're very often talking about Cohen's D. So Cohen's D is basically the mean difference. So the, this type of setup would be like a t-test, where we're looking at two different groups, divided by the full standard deviation of the group. So this is very basic. It's literally just the difference in mean divided by the standard deviation. And it may not be obvious here, but we don't care about the negative value. It uh, all that thing is m two is greater than m one if it's negative. But for the interpretation down here, we don't care if it's negative. You might want to take the absolute value of that. So the absolute value of m one minus m two divided by standard deviation. That would be Cohen's d. And we have a detected interpretation scale. This is not a hard rule. These are our opinions. We might use this. Someone else uh, equally as informed might use a different scale. And those are both fine. So we call 0.2 small, 0.5 medium, 0.8 large. It might be better to even, you know, compare a similar study and, like, for example, if, if your study were looking at a learning inter intervention in a specific population and another study were looking at a learning intervention in that same population, it may be meaningful to compare effect sizes in this way. But alone, you can also get a rough idea of what people think in a small effect size, medium effect size, and large effect size. But this is not a hard rule. Okay, so let's look at other hypothesis test situations. So let's say we're doing a correlation. So correlation looks at the effect of an outcome based on a predictor. Or you could 
I'll have to talk about independent dependent variables. I actually prefer outcome and predictory rather than independent dependent because I feel like it's more clear to everyone what I'm talking about. Okay, so for R, not R squared, this is just R on its own. Zero is no correlation. One is a perfect positive cor correlation, a line going like this. Negative one is perfect negative correlation. And everything else, there's nothing in between. So if it expect size, using R as an effect size, we don't care about direction. It, it's about magnitude, not direction per se. But I don't know if that's the most clear distinction. It's, a, it's about absolute value, the difference from zero. Not about uh, the direction. So, so between uh, negative 0 0.1 and positive 0 0.1, we could call that a small effect around 0.3 or negative 0.3 medium and a large effect at 0.5 or high or point, negative 0.5 and lower. And once again, these are not hard rules, they're frankly opinions. And you would find several other opinions. Okay, so these next two are going to get a little bit more abstract. Okay, so we have odds ratio. And odds ratio would come up in things like lysistic regression. So, a higher odds ratio above one means that that particular predictor has a greater likelihood of causing the event. So, the, the likelihood of group 1 would be greater than the likelihood of group 2 if the odd ratio is greater than 1. And I, I, don't, I don't mean, I, I mean significantly, like statistically significantly greater than 1. Because the no hypothesis for an odd ratio, or any ratio really, is 1. We assume no difference. Because if these were the same, it would be one if the odds of group one were five and the odds of group two were five, five divided by five would be one. Not, so the no hypothesis in this situation is not zero, it's one. Okay. So yes, we could look at the, the odds ratio here and value is greater than one and rather like high, higher values would be a more significant effect. And if you have a bunch of odd ratios with the same group 2 as the denominator, you, you can see the relative effect each odd ratio has on the outcome. And honestly, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't have a great knowledge of uh, Kramer's fee but it's a different method of effect size. Okay, so basically context matters and there's differing thresholds for what we constitute small, medium, and large effect. And reasonable people disagree and other reasonable people don't really care. Um, I, I might be more in that camp, but yeah, so beyond a p-value, effect I give you a, a rough estimate of like the magnitude of the effect of the predictor on the outcome. In the t-test situation, the predictor being the group you're in. Okay, effect I and power. The statistical power is the probability of finding an effect assuming it exists. So the larger an effect the effect. In general, the more power you have, the more likely you can, you are to find that effect. And that makes good sense with standard error being an equal thing. If you have a mean difference of 3, you're more likely to find that than a mean difference of 0.3. 
because you you need a much smaller standard error to find that point three than you would need to find that three. So, effect size and power go hand in hand, and they work alongside p values. So I guess power that really doesn't. I guess p power isn't really related to p values and effect size. Okay. So, after that tangent, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.